Ryan West, we just had a fascinating discussion with a, an array of uh, members of Congress who are involved in the Farm Bill, uh, including uh, Chairman Mike Conaway, of the, uh, who heads the House panel on agriculture. One of the things that was repeatedly referred to was the need by the farming community across the country for continuity. Talk a little bit about continuity, the need for the Farm Bill, why this bill needs to be passed this year. Well, I think our farmers, like all farmers, are facing a time when we've had a 50% decline in income over the past four years. As a matter of fact, farm income is now at a 12-year low. So when you are trying to do long-term business plans, you need that continuity. And as you know, most farm bills occur about every five years. Right. So when you're trying to do long-term business plans, you need that continuity. And in these times of low prices, it's very important. Yeah. For our farmers, just having the simple no-cost sugar policy, it may not sound like much to the average person, but that gives us the chance to be able to work with our lenders to get the credit we need to do that business plan for the next five years. People, you and I were talking a little earlier, and one of the things that you pointed out was that people seem to think that the farm bill is a sort of guaranteed profits for participants. It, it, you said this is a grave mistake. And correct it for us. I think it's very important for people to understand farming is a tough, tough business. There's competition all around the world. There's a great deal of uncertainty. There's regulatory uncertainty. There's price um, uncertainty. So policy certainty is one of the things everyone absolutely has to have. So when you look at these farm bills, they're massive. You cover all crops in all states, all types of temperatures, all types of uh, different farming seasons. For us, we're farming in the southern part of the United States mm -hmm. from uh, September all the way through April. Other people are taking in their harvest at the beginning of the fall. Right. So these are the things that we need to know that there is going to be certainty and these programs can actually be there. So one thing I'd like to say for us, our policy is pretty simple. We are a no-cost program, no cost to the taxpayer. We can take a loan from the government, but that has to be repaid with interest. Mm -hmm. Other crops may get a counter-cyclical payment. When prices are very low, they may get a check when those prices are down. Now, we don't qualify for those, but we support farm programs if that type of program works for those farmers. Right. Let's turn our attention just briefly for a final question to trade policy. Uh, there's a lot of controversy right now because the president has uh, said he's going to raise tariffs on uh, aluminum and steel. What's the Sugar Alliance's position on trade policy and how much is protectionism a threat, if at all, to you? Well, U.S. sugar policy, we often get attacked by multinational candy companies. The fact is we have the second or third most open sugar market in the world. We're the fifth largest producers in the world between cane and beets. Mm -hmm. We also happen to allow in the second or third most sugar of any country in the world. For us, President Trump and his administration have been fantastic. Between 2013 and 2016, Mexico caused $4 billion worth of harm to the U.S. sugar industry. Mexico was subsidizing and dumping into the U.S. market. The U.S. government, through the Department of Commerce and the U.S. International Trade Commission, found that this was indeed true. Our government asked us to negotiate a deal so that those duties could, that harm could stop. What most people don't know is when you win a trade agreement against a foreign company, country, you don't get the $4 billion back. You don't get paid back for the harm. The agreements only stop future harm. Right. So for us, these are important policies in a farm bill. While they can't stop trade harm, the important thing for us is we're just asking for the same policy that we have. Other countries are actually increasing their subsidies to their sugar growers. Brazil's spending about $2.5 billion a year subsidizing their industry. India's spending $1.7 billion a year. And Thailand, Thailand's spending $1.3 billion a year. So we can compete with anyone in the world. Our farmers are that competitive, but they cannot compete against foreign treasuries. Yeah. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, Ryan Weston, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much for making this uh, event possible. Thank you for hosting us. Thanks a lot.